Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. Faith School is the place where our spirit is fed, our faith grows stronger, and we learn how to be overcomers. You might say, well, why, why do you keep saying that? Well, it's a good confession. It's, uh, we're already releasing faith as to what's going to happen the next few minutes. We're not just, you know spending a few minutes and maybe pick up an odd thing to think about. No, we're releasing faith that the Word of God is going to feed our spirit right now. And our faith is actually not going to stay the same. It's going to get stronger. And whatever we're dealing with, we overcome. We're overcomers. So uh, get your Bible and get something to make notes with and come right on into the class and join us. And uh, give, give, you, give the Lord your full attention for these next few minutes. Let's pray and ask the Lord specifically for today's uh, manna, if you will, from heaven. Father, we ask you for the exact words and ministry anointing of your spirit that will affect what you know everyone needs the most right now and will affect your will and plan and purposes. We ask for it in Jesus' name. We ask you to open our eyes and hearts, help us to be able to grasp and understand, and we purpose to respect it and hold on to it, and as you show us how, do it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Turn, please, in the Bible, the great textbook, to Hebrews, the 10th chapter, and let's continue in our study we're calling By faith. In verse 38, Hebrews 10, 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if anybody, any man or woman draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Well, do we want the Lord to be pleased or, or not pleased with us? We want him to be pleased. Well, we know from just a few verses later, 11.6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. And so here he's showing us what's not faith. Drawing back, pulling back, laying back, laying down, sitting down, giving up, being passive, doesn't please him. He has no pleasure in that. Well, again, how many want to please him? Then what must we do? We must believe we must rise up, we must lay hold, we must resist the enemy, we must advance, we must take the land. Can you see that? That's faith that pleases him. And you can see why uh, so many, uh, even church going people, are not pursuing this because it's easier in some ways to not do this. Your flesh is averse to this. Why? You, you, you know, if you yield to your flesh, it'll be lazy, right? It wants to do less and less. And the, the, the more you yield to it, the less you do, the less your flesh wants to do. And so uh, whether it comes to, you know, the things of the church or the, uh, things in life, your job, your home, everything, if you yield to your flesh, you'll do less and less and less. It just wants to lay around all the time. And it takes energy. It takes a choice. How many, I don't even, I know your answer to this, but there are times you didn't feel like doing something. Hmm? I could say how many times today. <clears throat> you didn't feel like doing something, but you had to. Uh, overcome that and, and, and start going that direction. And as you did, you know, uh, you begin to warm up and you begin to get into it and you forget about not feeling like wanting to do it and you actually get to the point where you're enjoying doing it. Right? right. 
But getting started. <laughs> and, and that's just the flesh. And that's the flesh all the time. And if we yield to the flesh, we won't walk by faith. Uh, it'll hold us back. And the Lord's not pleased with us just giving up, just throwing up our hands, not even trying, making no effort. He has no pleasure in that. He has pleasure in faith. Skip down to verse 32. He said, what shall I more say for the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, and turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Man, this faith is something else, isn't it? <laughs> Because, he, see, he's not just saying that God did all this. He's saying faith was a factor, isn't he? Yes, Certainly God was involved. He does the part we can't do. We can't do his part. But he won't do our part. Our part is faith. We were looking uh, on yesterday at Barak. And if you'll go back to Judges, the fourth chapter, Let's continue looking at it because he's mentioned in this great Hebrews 11 chapter as someone who is a good example, an example that can be followed of the God kind of faith. We saw in the fourth chapter that as they had done before and would do so after this, God's people, the Israelites, uh, would serve him and follow him fairly well when they had a good leader. But when that leader died, uh, in the absence of a good godly leader, they just, you know, pursued the ungodly worship of idols and all kind of base and depraved thing. And when they would forsake God and leave God, they forfeited their protection. Now, this is a lesson for us today. You know, there's a reason why, you know I, know, I know people are watching from all countries, but as Americans, there's a reason why our country has been so blessed and prosperous for these uh, decade after decade. Not that we hadn't had our problems, we know that. But one of the things is we even confess that we're one nation mm -hmm. under God. <laughs> well, there are people fight that every day. They want every reference to God taken out of everything. You know, God forbid that they're successful because when this nation no longer has any representation of God, it has no protection from God. You know, is God obligated to protect and help people who deny His existence, who won't even listen to Him about anything? It's not reasonable. And it's not reality. And so that's what would happen to them. They would just, they would leave God. And so he would leave them in the hands of their enemies without protection. And so the enemies would overcome them. And at this particular juncture, they've been oppressed by a foreign king and his military commander, Sisera, for years and years. And it's been awful. They have been oppressed. They have been cruelly treated. Uh, and here the people finally cry out to God in their distress. <laughs> and he raises up a godly woman named Deborah. And he raises up a godly man named Barak. And Deborah, a prophetess, heard from the Lord and sent word to him that the Lord would deliver Sisera, who was a, an impressive commander and the weaponry they had for the day and the foot soldiers they had, I mean, nobody messed with them. Nobody had messed with them for years and years because there just was no need to, you, just if you wanted to die. <laughs> but uh, the Spirit of God spoke to Deborah and said, go tell Barak. Basically, I'm with him. I'll deliver Sisera into his hand. 
And so we see that here in this uh, fourth chapter and um, in the uh, seventh verse, the Lord said, I'm going to draw to you the river Kish and Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army and his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into your hand. This is the point, and this happens with everybody everywhere. When you hear the Lord's words, He's not going to force anyone to accept His words, believe His words, respond to His words. He purposefully leaves it completely to our choice. And that's every human being on the planet in every generation. And our everything that happens to us, the outcome, I should say, of everything that happens to us in this life and for eternity is the result of our response to what God said. Now, I know that's a big statement, but I'm going to say it again. Every, the outcome of everything in our life, even for eternity, is, is the result of our response to what God said. If God said, I'm your creator, I sent Jesus to be your savior, you are unacceptable by yourself, but Jesus has paid the price. If you hear that and you go, I don't believe any of that, that's religious junk, I don't care about it, you have determined your fate. Hmm? You have rejected salvation, you have rejected joy and peace, you have rejected heaven. Wasn't God's choice, it was your choice. Your response to what He said determines the outcome of your whole life, even eternity. And uh, how does faith come, class? How does faith come? It comes to you by hearing God's anointed words to you. But that doesn't mean you have to receive it, it comes. That doesn't mean you embrace it. That doesn't mean you act on it. It just, it comes. And can you see this? If we just stop right here, the word of the Lord has come to Deborah and it has come to Barak. So now he has to make a choice, right? What do I do? He has to decide, is this really God or not? And if he believes it's God, he has to believe that God can and will do what he told him he would do. And if he believes that's strong enough, it's stronger than his fear of dying. It's stronger than his fear of leading his troops into slaughter and failure. Because see, everything in the natural would tell you, well, did you see what happened to the last bunch that tried this? Right? There's a reason why nobody's messed with Sisera in years. How about those iron chariots <laughs> with the blades on them and all that stuff. And like we already said in the next chapter, it said, you couldn't find a sword or a spear among 40,000 in Israel. So what are you going to do for weapons? So, I mean, it's easy to read these stories, but these are not fairy tales, right? And back then, war, warfare was not, you know, pushing a button. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get close. <laughs> you had to get close usually and somebody's trying to plunge a blade in you. And it is, is you know, warfare is still terrible. I don't mean to minimize that, but it's, it's always been terrible and it just unimaginable. You know, one, one guy said uh, war is hell and it, it's, it's a taste of it. Gotta be. But what would give you the courage and the strength to overcome your fear of death, to overcome your fear of failure, and put a group together <laughs> to go take on this bad dude, you know? Huh? The faith of God. Oh, there's something stronger than your feelings. There's something stronger and bigger than the worst thing you could ever encounter in life. All you need is a word from God. And when you get that, you got faith in God. And that is the victory that overcomes the whole world. And you got that in you, class. You've got that in you. 
When I say class, I'm looking at all the class. <laughs> uh, so, Barak, verse 8, he said to her, if you'll go with me, then I'll go. <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> <laughs> now, militarily, I don't think Deborah's going to be much help. <laughs> but he believes she's talking to God. Right? He believes she's talking to God and hearing from God. And in those days, you couldn't tell each other just be led by the Spirit. They didn't have the Spirit in them like we do today. And so he knows that she's hearing from God. And so he says, if you'll go with me, I'll go. But if you, if you won't go with me, then I will not go. And she said, I'll surely go with you. Now get this. You know, think about her. She, she's a judge in the land. And so typically you don't send your judges to the front line. <laughs> right? <laughs> and... Uh, she was called a mother in Israel. You know, perhaps she had children of her own there at home too. And she's going to go to the front line with Barak against 900 iron chariots. Faith is courageous. Huh? Nothing wimpy about faith. The, and, and the reason we're talking about these things is the scripture says we have the same spirit of faith. That's why he said in that 32nd verse of Hebrews 11, he said, he mentions another half dozen and he said, and all the prophets, time would fail me to tell you about all of them. And it's not all the details that you need to know, it's the spirit of faith. Because the, the spirit of faith that we see in, in Deborah and Barak, that's the same spirit of faith that was in Noah when he built that ark. Same spirit of faith that was in Elijah when he faced down the prophets of Jezebel. So, same spirit of faith, same spirit of faith today that you and I would face whatever we're dealing with. Exactly the same spirit of faith. And so when we're in faith school and we're reading these scriptures and we're believing God's heard our prayer about utterance, we're not just trying to learn some things about the principles of faith. We're believing the actual spirit of faith that was in these people is getting in us more do you believe that? Yes. It's getting in us. And that's why I say, now I don't care if you're in Austria or Australia or Canada or Florida. Uh, you are coming in here by faith with us. When your mind is here and your spirit is here, the spirit of faith is here and it's getting in you. Amen. I said it's getting in you. Yes. The spirit of faith is getting in you. Yes. How can you tell? You stop being afraid. Yes. You stop backing up. You stop laying down. Something in you stands up and goes, I'm taking this. <laughs> I'm, I'm overcoming this. Devil, you picked the wrong one to mess with. I'm not laying down and dying. I'm an overcomer. Somebody say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. In fact, let me read, read some verses to you along that line. The scripture says, uh, it, time after time, when the Lord told his people to do something, he gave them these words. In 2 Corinthians 32, 2 Chronicles rather, 32. Don't turn there, just listen. 2 Chronicles 32, 7. He said, be strong and courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed. And at that time he said, for the king of Assyria, because they were coming against him with a great host. He said, for there's more with us than are with him. With him is the arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. And the Bible said the people rested themselves on those words. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, they were scared before that. Well, uh, there were times the Bible said a million foot soldiers showed up <laughs> on their border. Whew. And they, they didn't come to party. <laughs> what did they come for? They came to wipe out the fighting men and then take everybody else's slave, take all your livestock, take all your stuff. And, you know, they, they don't just come and decide to turn around and leave. They've been through all this forced march. They, they've spent all this money. They want a payday. 
And, and you know, a lot of them just, you know, they, they have a taste for killing now. They want to kill. And so uh, the, the fear is tangible, you know. It just comes when you see a host like that. And you know they are there to kill you. What, what can you do? Many people have no clue. You don't start crying and begging. That won't help it. That won't fix it. You need a word from the Lord. And one of the words he would give them repeatedly, let me read it again. What would he say? Be strong and courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. Now we, we need to analyze those words. Because if you've read the Bible or you heard preaching, you've probably heard some of that before. And it's easy to hear it and it sounds familiar. And you go, yeah, yeah, that's right. Be strong, be strong. No, he intends for you to do something with that. Not just hear it and go, yeah, I, I'm acknowledging you said that. No, no. His words are not just encouragement. They're not just instruction. His words are empowerment. They are enablement. Can you say amen? amen? And so when the Lord tells you, be strong, it's not just encouragement. Hmm? It is actual empowerment. i tell you what, go with me to the book of, uh, let me see, I think it's uh, Daniel. Go with me to the book of Daniel and look at this. Because to me, it's Daniel 10 is such a good example of what we're, we're talking about. Daniel had some amazing experiences with God. He, he had visions. He saw angels and saw and heard amazing things and wrote a lot of them down. That's what the book of Daniel, that's where it came from. And uh, Daniel 10 verse 17, on one of these occasions when uh, Daniel is having this amazing experience, and this angel shows up to talk to him. He said, verse 17, he says, How can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me straightway there remains no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. You know, in some ways our, our bodies are so, you know, they can be strong and, and resilient and amazing. And in other ways, they're frail and can be gone in a couple of minutes. And when he encountered the might of this supernatural experience and this angel, he just, he felt like he couldn't even breathe. He couldn't, couldn't get up off the floor. And so, uh, verse 18, then there came again and touched me, one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And verse 19, he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to you, be strong, yes, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened. Hallelujah. Can you see? He's not just exhorting him to be strong. There's something in his words. There's actual strength in the words he's speaking to him that's going right into him. When he's saying, be strong, Daniel is going, hmm. <laughs> Be strong. Mm. Yes. <laughs> right? I mean, he couldn't even get off the floor. And now he said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. How did he do it? He spoke it into him. Just by saying that. Be strong. Yes. Be strong. And he said, when he said that, I was strengthened. We not only need to receive this. We need to minister this. And we need to get away from thinking that words are only for communication. God does not just use his words to express what he's thinking and how he feels. He uses his words to create, to change, to enable, to empower. And the Bible tells us that we're to be followers or imitators of God as dear children. It's not thinking too much of yourself. It's being a good learner. It's being a good student, right? Jesus showed it, demonstrated in his life and ministry how to do it. He spoke to trees. 
He spoke to the wind, didn't he? He spoke to waves, and it wasn't just communication. Huh? It wasn't just high wind, I see you, I hear you, how you doing? Waves? No. There was power in what he said that actually changed the material realm. And this is not magic, this is not fantasy, this is faith. This is reality. And so uh, in times where our fl flesh feels weak, and there will be times when your flesh feels weak or your mind feels weak, and the situation just seems overwhelming, we can help ourselves. Remember David when Ziklag was destroyed, his hometown and every, everybody he knew and everything he had was taken away. And even his own fellow soldiers talked about stoning him. The Bible said he, in the middle of that, encouraged himself in the Lord. He ministered to himself. <laughs> A lot of times if you're waiting for somebody else to prop you up, you're in trouble. <laughs> because <laughs> you can't count on somebody else to do it. You can do it yourself. And if you read the Psalms, you'll see different examples of him doing it. He'd say, soul, he's talking to himself. Soul, why are you cast down? Huh? I, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt the Lord. And the Bible said, let the weak say, let the weak say, I am. Well, you don't, if you're weak, you don't look strong. You don't feel strong, but you're going to say. And if there's faith in those words, there will be actual strength in those words. And it, it, it can come into you, affect you, and you can do that with your children. You can do that. I'm not talking about in a rebuking, correcting way. When, when your child's going through something, you can put a hand on them and you say, be strong. You know, not, not berating them. Hey, be a man, be strong. Not, not that. Not that. That's being a hypocrite. You've had moments yourself. Yes. <laughs> but in love and in faith, say, be strong, be quickened, be strong, peace be to you, grace and strength be to you. If you say it with real faith, it's not just words, it's not just sounds. The actual force of the Spirit comes into people. Can you say amen? amen. Well, we're already out of time again. <laughs> said out loud, I live by faith, I walk by faith, I overcome the world by faith, I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. We'll see you next time here in Faith School. I've got a victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today. But you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.